Good morning, beloveds. I am running wicked late today. Um, I, and I, and I'm not even sure why. <laughs> Other than, I mean, I did squeeze in a shower there. Um, I've, I've, I've been feeling much better lately. And there's been a couple of things. I'm, I am trying to get more sleep, which I'm not terribly successful with that right now. Um, but I've reduced the amount of exercise that I'm doing. Uh, it's, it's this trap that women fall into when we go through menopause. It's like, um, our weight starts to creep up because our hormones have shifted. And so then we start to exercise more. And apparently that just increases one of the hormones that causes us to gain weight. So I was like, okay, so I'm not, I haven't stopped exercising, but what I've done is I worked back from, cause I was like, I was walking for an hour and I was riding my bike for an hour and I'm like, no, I'm, I've cut it back to 30 minutes. So I'm still doing it every day, but I'm just not doing as much. Uh, which is freeing up a little bit of time in my morning. So it's, it's been an interesting and then, and what I've noticed is that I feel better. Um, so, you know, there is something to this hormone balance thing. So, uh, it is February 8th. Our title is the perfection within me. The first quote is again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in a field. And when, in which, when a person has found it, they hideth and then for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that they have and buyeth that field. Matthew thirteen forty four. I don't enjoy the language. Sorry. <laughs> um, the second quote is success in the attainment of objects forsaketh the person whose heart is unsteady or who hath no control over their mind, or who is the slave of their senses. And that's the Bhagavad Gita. If you don't know now, I'm going to tell you this is an Ernest Holmes write, um, article. Who would not, who would not be successful in the true sense of the term? There is no success without happiness and a sense of certainty. There is something eternal about success. There is no grief in success because one who is truly successful is no longer sad. They know that they know the things of this world are but temporary. Their treasure is truly in heaven. Jesus likened it unto a treasure hid in the field. And he said we would sell everything we have in order that we might purchase this field and uncover this hidden treasure. This treasure cannot be found while the heart is unsteady. While a person who is a slave to the object appearances or while they lack control over their thought world. This means that genuine success, even in our objective undertakings, depends first upon all our ability, our stability of mind, consistency of purpose, and concentration of effort. The kingdom of heaven is already hidden within us. The field which contains this hidden treasure is our own spirit. But the priceless pearl is covered by the hardened shell of experience. We must learn to see God at the center of our being. Today, I uncover the perfection within me. In its fullness, I reveal the indwelling kingdom. I look out upon the world of my own affairs, knowing that the spirit within me maketh my way both immediate and right. For I know that the the spirit that dwelleth in me, it doth the work. It does the work. Uh, and like I said, it's E.H. It's Ernest Holmes. And honestly, I was not prepared for the hardened shell of experience. I was not prepared for that. I did not see that coming. The hardened shell of experience. Oh my, that is earth shaking. That is earth shattering. The hardened shell of experience. Because I, I was, as I'm doing the reading, I'm thinking, you know, the Buddhists have this idea of attachment and attachment causes suffering. And when we're attached to the material world, knowing that eventually we are going to lose the material world, um, meaning all of the things, because nothing is permanent. Um, that's what I was, that's where I thought he was going. You know, suffering is the source of attachment, you know, let go of all that. The hardened shell of experience. Which brings to light a whole new idea 
of um, be as little children. Uh, which is another quote from uh, from Jesus that Ernest loves. Be ye as little children. To enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be as little children. Which means we have to shed that hardened shell of experience. I do talk frequently about the layers. Um, when you when you begin to do spiritual work, that is one of the things that you start working on is the layers of nonsense that we have had put upon us and that we have put upon ourselves based on what we have been told by society and religion and culture and about, you know, like about gender and sexual identity and sexual, you know, gender expression and sexual and all of that, you know, and, and, and there's just a lot of nonsense. There's a whole lot of nonsense. Um, and, and that, could absolutely contributes to the hardened shell of experience. And it's like, so, so sometimes, and that's exactly what it is. The more experience we have. Okay. See, now that gives me another interpretation to being overeducated. <laughs> there's, there's a, and I forget where it is, a passage in the Bible. And it's, I think it's in the letters um, where it's like, don't trust somebody who's, who's too learned is who's, who's spent too much time learning it, it, and it's not that they don't want you to be uneducated. It's like, just watch the, watch the experiences that you have and don't let those experiences harden you to the world. Don't let those learnings and, you know, harden you to the truth of your being. Oh my God. Oh my God. Don't let those experiences harden you. Ah, oh, pardon me while I just have this revelation right here, right now, about the hardened shell of experience. Because we forget who we are. We forget that the kingdom is within us. We forget that we were made by God, of God, for God. We forget that we are spirit in motion. We get this hardened shell of experience and we forget that there is a spiritual world back of the material world. The perfection within me. There. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Be as little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. Be as little children. You got to shed that hardened shell of experience. You've got to unlearn all of the crap that you have learned. You've got to unlearn all of the stuff that other people have told you. You've got to unlearn all of the stuff that you've told yourself and learn who you really are. Mind blown. And that is all I'm going to say about it. The hardened shell of experience I was so not prepared for that. Oh, oh my God. The field which contains this hidden treasure is our own spirit, but the priceless pearl is covered by the hardened shell of experience. We must learn to see God at the center of our being. If we can learn to see God at the center of our being, we can learn to see God at the center of anyone's being. So this is what I'm going to tell you. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to shed that hardened shell of experience. And what does that look like? All of it. It looks like doing the homework of knowing who you are, of making regular trips to the source of your own being. It looks like treatment. It looks like prayer. It looks like affirmation. It looks like spiritual um, mind treatment. It looks like meditation. It looks like action. It looks like treating and moving your feet. It looks like doing the hard work. And sometimes that might look like going to the doctor, seeing a therapist, seeing a practitioner, um, you know, taking those classes that you've been avoiding and doing this, you know, doing, doing the, doing the spiritual practices, all of that. That's what it looks like. 
That's how you crack that hardened shell of experience. And it looks like being vulnerable. And it looks like opening the windows of your soul and opening your heart. Oh. All right. You have your mission. You have your mission. I need to make a note of this, write this down, because, oh my God, the hardened shell of experience. There is a Sunday talk, maybe an entire series in that. Oh, okay. I'm just... <laughs> You're getting to watch somebody have that revelation right here. Oh, my God. Okay. So, <sighs> I've given you the mission. The The follow-up to that is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for you, for yourself. You deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. Absolutely. It is absolutely about self-care. I make no bones about it. Take a deep breath before you speak. Take a nap. Take a day off. Take a rest. Take a break. Get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Um, it is absolutely about cracking that hardened shell. That is the practice. Loving kindness. That's what it's about. Um, oh, wow. Um, it is about making room for joy. I, I say eat dessert first, I, and I mean it literally. Sometimes I do mean that literally. Eat dessert first. Um, but it also means don't save the good stuff. It means your life is a special occasion. Treat it as such. Use the good china. Wear the, 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 the pretty dress, in my case, um, or the cute clothes, or, you know, dress up, or be comfortable. That, you know... If, if pretty clothes are uncomfortable, then be comfortable. You know, I, I askew heels. <laughs> that is not loving, kind, and compassionate. So I choose shoes that are comfortable, that are cute. But, you know, that's what it looks like. You know? Love, kindness, and compassion. I say it every day because I want you to create the habit. I want you to create a first response. And when I say a response... The difference between a reaction and a response is a moment of, of conscious thought. A moment of conscious thought. And a moment is as long or as short as you need it to be. So um, that's why I say it every day. That's why I want you to practice it every day. Because I want it to be a default setting. We are born loving. We are born kind. We are born compassionate. And it's that hardened shell of experience that makes us not. So when we crack it, that natural ability to be loving, kind, and compassionate no matter what happens. That's where it comes from. It comes from the center of our being, the source of our being, and that, that, my, my beloveds, is where God is. That is where spirit is, the center of your being. Go there. All right. <sighs> I'm just really excited now. Um, so I'm going to remind you to do something to engage your mind and your body. Just because I'm cutting down the amount of time I'm doing doesn't mean I'm not doing it. So I do encourage you to do that. I encourage you to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Um, your brain works better. <laughs> and if you're going to crack the hardened shell of experience, that's what you want to do. Make sure you're well hydrated to do that kind of work. Um, and, and get that early in your day bright light. Uh, I, I talk about circadian rhythms for a reason. It is science. Uh, and I want you to feel better. I want you to feel good. If you're going to do this kind of work, that's what, you know, feeling better is going to make that work a whole lot easier. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. So, you know, early in the day, bright light. If it's natural sunlight, great. And if it's not, that's good too. You know, do what you got to do. Okay. Oh. Um. And open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us because it's a state of mind. A hardened shell of experience. Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. Um, that's what I'm talking about. That quote from Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul. If you open the windows of soul, your soul, you are cracking that shell. You are allowing for new experiences and you are letting go of things that no longer serve you. And one of the best ways to do that is to take Emma Curtis Hopkins advice. Look for the good and praise it. 
I mean, they're called master teachers for a reason. Jesus is absolutely a master teacher. Emma Curtis Hopkins is considered the teacher of teachers because she taught so many. And, you know, Ernest had it going on. He looked at this one teacher and went, I want what he's got. And then he looked at the rest of the teachers in the world and went, you know, they're all pointing in the same direction. All right, beloveds. It's amazing. It's wondrous. I've had a revelation. Now let's see what I do with it. And hopefully it is helpful for you. So, um, social media, we are Creative Life Spiritual Journal, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Please take advantage of all of that stuff. The soul session's really amazing. I saw an email from Jesse where he, I think he gave me a list of suggestions for, um, soul session titles. And so that, that'll be something that I get to do tomorrow night. Um, and, um, so look out for that. Uh, and, whew, um, here's where I get to remind you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a revelation day, a crack in the shell of experience day, a having your mind blown day, having your heart opened day a wonder filled day, an amazing day, a stay dry day. Cause there's weather coming, uh, a take care of yourself day, a know who you are day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You're a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light. You are a divine spark. You are amazing. You are spirit in action. You are God in motion. You are a godling in whom God is well pleased and well represented always and forever. All right, beloveds. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time. <laughs>